My name is Michael Trepanier. The studio is called Cardinal Song. Uh, I named it actually kind of for my wife. She's from St. Louis. She kind of went back back and forth between St. Louis and Oklahoma City as a kid. And um, when I was thinking of names, it was one of those, I was just trying to find a, a kind of a, a, a small way to lean it at her. And it, it turns out it's also a song title from The National, which was not intended. Yeah, I lived in, uh, Phoenix, Arizona for a little while, or Tempe, I guess, technically, and then uh, moved to New York City for a while. Did that for about five, five and a half years. Moved back to Oklahoma City. I think that the music industry is uh, it's kind of the same everywhere. And to some extent, there's people who are making records and, and artists who are um, needing to have records and ideas recorded. So I think that translates pretty much anywhere you go. I mean, the the larger business is obviously, you know, in the bigger cities, but um, I don't think the talent or the gene pool is any different, you know, just whether or not the business, the larger business is there, yeah. I mean, it goes back to me being 16 and cutting my band's first demo in the garage of my dad's business. It's one of those like, what, what, what can we do with this little thing that we've made and who has a, a cassette recorder? The API, this little thing is wonderful. It's absolutely amazing, especially for the size and the price point you get into it. It's, it's unbelievably cool. Um, it's a really fast console as far as the, um, the workflow on it. It sounds incredible. I mean, uh, without being overly technical, the, you know, the mic amps sound incredible, the, the, pre the preamps sound incredible, and, and just being able to, to route on it so quickly um, is wonderful. We have a set of ATC SCM25s and they're running through a Trenov ST2 room correction software. We have a set of Proac Studio 100s. And our third little guy is this Avantone. Isn't he cute? He's running through this, the 1608. And then things that are usually on the stereo mix are gonna be our stereo compressor over here, um, which is a smart um, CL1A. And then we also have a Retro 283 EQ that's in our rack over here. Those things are wonderful, and it's a huge part of the sound of um, kind of what's happening in the room. Outside of those things, which are pretty much almost always plugged in in some format, one way or the other, um, we also have our Yuri Blackface 1176, which shows up on all sorts of stuff, and it's lead vocal, um, whatever. That thing's amazing. Modular synthesis really screwed my brain up. We're used to hardware things where it's a slider or you've got a knob, but it's not something that is playable. I mean, you, you could play it, but it becomes very cumbersome because it's not something you can just do naturally. You know, so then then we have the concept of CV controlling anything. And then, and then yeah, it, took, it, it rewired my brain. It was a fascinating thing. And so I went head first into synthesizers. My Electromonics hot tube, hot tubes, yeah. Well, and it's the old one. It's not. It's not the little new one. It's the big, the large format one. It's my favorite overdrive. It just sounds unbelievably cool. Yeah, I use it all the time. It's great. I absolutely adore it. Outside of that, and something like in a more modern um, sort of realm, the old blood noise ma. Get your ma at old blood noise. This thing's incredible. When we start talking about moving into like uh, audio over ethernet and Dante specifically is it's, it's so exciting. 
our synthesizer world over here is connected to the Dante world as well. So it's got all the synthesizers come to one mixer and then that mixer is connected over Dante. So I can pump that or have things go to it uh, from anywhere in the building. The idea of you can push something anywhere with just having an ethernet cable and a little bit of ingenuity. It's, it's fascinating. You know, being able to, you as an engineer and artist coming in, literally just plugging an ethernet cable into my network and being able to connect your entire Pro Tools logic, whatever session to me. I use create new tracks and I can just press record. Or you could jump on the network and record things independently of me. It, it's fascinating, it's amazing, absolutely amazing. That one piece of wood, you know, is, is at least 30 days of my life. And then it's followed, you know, by the furniture we built for the console. Um, but this was some really, really hardcore uh, woodworking and I did about 50% of it and then the other 50% was my dad who's an amazing woodworker you know would take parts home that I didn't have the tools for and would and would begin shaping them you know and then, and then we put it all together it was a lot I mean I guess our slogan would be your friendly neighborhood recording studio right so the, the whole point of that is to you know, just try to soften the blow of what it means to be a recording studio. Some people get really nervous about being in a place, you know, um, especially in a technical place, kind of like a recording studio or anything like that, whether it's here or, I don't know, a photo studio or something like that. Um, the, the idea of it being the friendly neighborhood recording studio helps demystify that, it just allows you to know you've got a good place to come and work. That's what we're here for, we're here to make great records. Thing that I think is missed about people making music in Oklahoma is, you know, especially again coming from that larger market sort of mindset, is that uh, the talent isn't here, which is, just isn't true. We have an incredible amount of, of talent and uh, creativity in our in our bones, and, and that's just the makeup of of everybody around us. You know, so um, incredible bands, incredible musicians in this area. It's one of those things that. Um, I think people are going to be paying more attention to in the near future.